Tough day to be a Wales fan, isn't it? Ordinarily, when a Six Nations squad is being announced, Wales fans would be full of enthusiasm and excitement ahead of a new campaign, knowing they've got Scotland coming to Cardiff in just a couple of weeks. But I, I sense serious negativity, nervousness, apprehension, and a little bit of anger as well bubbling under the surface. And that's because this squad has been announced very, very raw in terms of experience, very young as well. It, it, I don't know about you, but it, it looks to me more like a, a squad that would be sent off for a developmental summer tour to Japan or the USA than would be picked for a Six Nations campaign. So there are Wales fans that are getting very worried about how this team may get on. One thing I've learned over the years, quite often painfully as an English fan, is that whatever Wales's team looks like on paper, when they run out onto the field, they managed to pull performances out of themselves, especially under Warren Gatland, whose mantra has always been, be the best at the things that require no skill. And he will have a hard-working team who will smash every ruck and hit every opponent and be organised in defence and have a great team spirit. And that can get you a long way. Now, they're going to have, they're going to be galvanised by a sense of having being written off by press and by fans. You know, the Wales fans will support them but I think there's the, certainly the ones, the friends of mine that are Welsh, that what they're saying is they're a little bit worried because this seems like a very, very green Wales squad. And when you think about the names that were involved in the World Cup that aren't there now, British and Irish Lions, household names, the likes of Tau Lupe Falatau and Liam Williams. And then when you add to that the fact that Jack Morgan, you know, the talisman and the new captain, the new face of Welsh rugby, he's not there due to injury as well. Uh, that's all one thing. And then what we also learned today is that Wales will not be able to select Lewis Rees Samit, who has, for the time being at least, left the sport. There's a video on that in the feed right now. Go and have a look. I do put a bit of a positive spin on it because I'm excited for Lewis Rees Samit. I think it's an amazing opportunity. Will be a brilliant experience and a story to follow. I also understand it is a hammer blow. I don't see it as a, a sign that rugby is dying or. It, it, when you hear Lewis Rees Samit talk about what American football and the NFL means to him, he sat watching it growing up with his dad and he's got an opportunity to go and have a crack. I don't think he will make it. I think if he even makes a, a practice roster, which is likely what he will manage, that will be an amazing achievement in itself just to pull on the uniform and be going and working with these super athletes. If he makes a roster... I will be blown away. If he's not back playing for Wales in a couple of years, I will be blown away. So try and see the bigger picture and know that he will come back. And in the meantime, you can unearth the next talent. Will the extra time and, and, and ability to play for Rio Dyer turn him into a superstar? Who knows? I know it does feel even worse and it would have softened the blow, wouldn't it? If you know you lost Lewis, Lewis Rees Summit, but on the same day, you see Emmanuel Faye Waboso's name down in that squad. That would have made it feel a little bit better. But you haven't got him either. Uh, and that that one, in some respects, I think should hurt a little bit more. Because this is a lad that grew up, played his rugby in Cardiff. And it looks like he's choosing England over Wales because of the... Well, just because of... Well, because of non-rugby factors. His education, which couldn't be accommodated in Cardiff, apparently. And then you've also got the fact that his Exeter teammate Joe Hawkins is not going to be playing for Wales and hasn't wasn't available through through the World Cup or last year because he plays for Exeter Chiefs and he has been capped in this Welsh cap rule. They just it just doesn't seem joined up. When you throw that in with the infrastructure of the Welsh regions, the the financial woes that are going on, all the knock on effects that that has for the players, for coaches, it just it feels like a bit of a mess. It really, and so I totally understand the, the uh, just the desperation that Wales fans who go out and support their team admirably. I understand the desperation that they feel. Um, oh, what's going on here? Uh, there we go. So I will come back to what I think a Wales team for that opening game against Scotland might be in a minute. But when you just look through this squad, I mean, there's some good players there. You got, I think there's only four players that are 30 or over. But you've got some British and Irish Lions, George North and Josh Adams. Gareth Davis been a lion? I think he, I think he might have been. Um, and you've got some really solid players in the pack. And also, without Jack Morgan, you have got another 
absolute superstar in the making in Daffith Jenkins. This guy is, I think he could be a generational talent. He's the captain in Jack Morgan's stead. He's been doing that job for Exeter Chiefs incredibly well. And he just looks like the, the, the natural heir to Alan Wynne Jones's throne. And I think he can he could potentially live up no what very, hardly anyone will live up to Alan Wynne Jones in in the the whole future of the sport. But he's got a good chance of of carving out an incredible career of his own. So there's lots to be enthusiastic about. And there's lots of young players that are going to be given a chance. Uh, Cameron Winnett, for example. I know, I know there's so much excitement about this lad in the back three. Um, there are areas, though, that I just feel a bit nervous. Front row. That front row does not look international class. But then again, Warren Gatland plucked Thomas Francis. He wasn't even... It wasn't even that Thomas Francis had a decision to make. Will he play for England or will he play for Wales? He was never in a month of Sundays going to play rugby for England. But Warren Gatland saw something in him, picked him, and he's, what, 80 caps to his name? Fantastic international. So there will be something in some of these players that no one else has seen that Warren Gatland has spotted. And, well, but just to put it in context... One, and this is not knocking the guy, this is what an opportunity, but Archie Griffin, second row, he plays at Bath. I say he plays at Bath, he has never started a Premiership game and he's in a Six Nations squad. That is, uh, that is quite something. So what will a Wales team look like? Tell me what you think the 15 will be for that game against Scotland and Wales' uh, fixtures, I mean it starts probably about as kindly as it could. Uh, that's no disrespect to Scotland. It's just that Wales's record against Scotland in Cardiff is amazing. So, well, so Scotland might be looking at it and thinking, if we can't break our Cardiff curse this time, we never will. Uh, they've got Scotland at home, then England away, both winnable. Then Ireland away, that looks very tough at this point. France at home, big challenge, and Italy at home. So I think Wales can realistically think that they can win three games There's, there, there is some talk about <laughs> memes and stuff being put online about wooden spoon and stuff I think that's a little bit premature and a little bit unfair because yes the squad overall is green it's raw some of the guys might feature and then not make it as international players but whatever team 15 goes on the pitch will do a solid job I've had a go at picking a team tell me what you think about this and you can see my concerns are the front row mainly, the prop positions, um, the tight head prop in particular. You've, well, you just don't have your your main tight head props from the Rugby World Cup just gone. So I I don't know exactly what that will look like. I'm just kind of plucking a name. I I don't know. But look at the rest of the pack. It looks all right, and it will get better. Jack Morgan coming back in will make a big difference. Uh, when he when he does, but Tame Basham, hey, he's got a chance right now. They'll be serviceable. They'll be good. They'll they'll put a shift in, and you you've got good experience on the bench. When you when you look at Adam Beard here, it could be Will Rowlands is on the bench, and Adam Beard is starting. If they can keep all of these guys fit, that's all right. And the back line looks decent to me. I've put Mason Grady on the wing and Josh Adams to full back, just because I thought just get the talent that you know and has already been weighed and measured at international level on the pitch. It may well be that they go for Kai Evans at fullback and keep Josh Adams on the wing, Mason Grady to come off the bench. That would be decent as well. They've got decent players. I, Sam Costello, he's now got the opportunity to try and make the 10 jersey his own. A lot of responsibility on his shoulders. When I come to doing the videos ahead of the Six Nations, I will do a kind of match-up. And if you had, so for example, the first game, if you had all of the Scotland team and all of the Wales team, what would you put together in a combined team? I don't think it will look. I don't know. I'll have to, have to revisit it. Yes, there'll be some obvious ones. You'd want Finn Russell over Sam Costello. But there's quite a lot of Wales players that, that will be in the mix. I say that and I'll, I'll have to, I'm just racking my brains. Maybe not that many. But to re return to a point I made previously, what, whatever the team looks like on paper, a Warren Gatland Wales team will go out and do a job. So all is not lost. We're going to learn a lot about these guys. And you could come out the other side of a Six Nations 
feeling a whole lot better in exactly the same way as by the time Wales got to a World Cup, you must have felt a lot better if you were a Wales fan towards the end of 2023 than you did at the end of 2022. The, the, the change in that team was remarkable. Why can't they do it again for all of the negativity surrounding the team and which you're going to be reading about and seeing in the coming days? I'd love to know what you think. I'd love it if you give the video a thumbs up. That helps spread the word. It's just me and I need you to help tell other rugby fans that I even exist. I'm Tim, this is Egg Chasers and I will see you on the next one.